Okay, here we have the actual definition of a limit. And before we even look at it, I want to take a look at this very last line and see if we can decipher what it what it's trying to say. So, <clears throat> the absolute value of x minus c is less than this is the Greek letter delta, just so you know. The 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 lowercase delta, the the triangle uppercase triangle if you've seen that as delta that's delta 2 anyways okay x minus c is less than delta what does that mean well hopefully you watched the last video and you got an idea that this is really describing an interval and what are we saying we're saying x has to be within delta units of c so it could be c plus delta so this would be c plus delta and c minus delta And it wouldn't be too hard to do some algebra to to get to get it in a form that you recognize where it's really an interval. But hopefully you just do recognize this, that as an as an interval. Okay, so this is c minus delta, c plus delta. Good. Now, what does this zero here mean? That just means that x can't equal c. <clears throat> because if x equaled c, then you'd have x minus c equals zero. Of course, because if, if x is equal to c, if you subtract them, they'll be th that will equal zero. But we're saying that it can't be zero; it has to be greater than zero. So that's just saying that x can't equal c. So this whole statement here, this whole mathematical statement, all it's really saying is that x has to be in an interval, and the interval is is this one that we've already we've already laid out. And it, it also it can't. Oops. So let me let me. It's this interval, but it can't be C. X can't be C. And it can't be these endpoints either. We already talked about why it can't be the endpoints. So X has to be somewhere. This could be X, or this could be X, or this could be X. It has to be in this interval somewhere. Okay. So, so we're forcing X to be here. And it's saying if that's true, then F of X is going to be within certain, within epsilon units of L. And let me show you a graphic representation of that. Oops, I want that to be purple. Didn't work. Okay. So we can move up and then over. Okay. I'm taking I'm trying to take my time with this drawing because I think that that will actually help you if it if it's drawn well it will help you more. Okay. So so when when c is within delta units of or when x is within delta units of c so that means x is in this interval then f of x has to be within this interval. So here's here's l plus epsilon and l minus epsilon. And so what we're saying is if f of x is or sorry if x is in this interval f of x will definitely be let me just draw x is f of x will definitely be somewhere in this interval right and that's pretty easy to see because if as long as x is somewhere in here you can you can just see by looking at it f of x has to be somewhere in there because the heights the it, to get a, a, a height outside that interval, x would have to be outside that interval. So, so x would have to be outside of its interval that we defined with these deltas for f of x to be outside of this interval with the epsilons. Now, so, so that's what's going on with the intervals, but what we're saying, the, the, the important part is the line before that actually. So we've defined a couple intervals, but we're saying the limit means that for each epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero that makes this true. So what does that mean? Well, the greater than zero part is, is pretty easy. It just means that epsilon and delta both have to be greater than zero. So epsilon could be 0 0.01, it could be 1 billion, you know, delta could be pi, it could be, it could be 32, who knows. So these things just have to be greater than zero. And 
And for every single epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero to make this true. So that means that you can pick any epsilon you want. So here's one epsilon we've picked. What if we pick an epsilon a little bit closer? So let me call that epsilon two. Epsilon two. So this is L minus epsilon two and L plus epsilon two. So if we pick if we pick an epsilon even closer, can we find a delta that will force f of x to be in that new interval? And hopefully you, you can see that the answer is yes. So now we have, we have to pick new deltas. So let me erase the old ones. And now we have to pick these new ones. So these new ones, I should have done that one in a different color. This will be C plus delta 2, because it's the new delta, and C minus delta 2. And, and so we, we found a delta. The delta happens to be this length now in here. So it, this delta will force f of x to be within, to be within eps, the new epsilon units, so epsilon 2 units of L. So this delta 2 will, will force f of x to be in the proper interval. And we could pick uh, a, a, a different delta. We could pick, or sorry, a different epsilon. Let's say we want f of x to be even closer. So this is epsilon 3, let's say. OK, so can we find a delta that will force f of x to be in that new smaller interval? And the answer is yes. So here's our new delta, our new delta. So let me, just to, just for space saving reasons, let me erase the old one. And now our new one is now this yellow interval. So this is delta 3. So we found a different delta, and this new delta forces f of x to be within, to be in the right interval for this new epsilon. So hopefully you can see that because because the the limit says for each epsilon that means that that we could pick epsilon is equal to point zero zero dot 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 and and let's insert a trillion zeros where those dot dot dots are a trillion zeros zero one well that will make that will make the interval that f of x can be in super small it will be right 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 on the limit a, a trillion zeros but the limit says for each epsilon greater than zero. That means for this epsilon, we have to be able to find a delta. And can we find a new delta? And let's see if, let's see if we can. So what color can I use here? Why don't I use red for this one? So now we have a, a, a new epsilon, and it's super close to the limit. So this would be epsilon 4. In fact, it's, it's so close that it's overlapping that circle that I've drawn. And, and of course, then we'd have to find a new delta. So, and, and there is a delta in this case that exists to make that true. Oops, everything's not closed off right. But see, for this smaller interval, could we find a small delta interval? And the answer was yes, we definitely could. We, we just did it. And we found that interval, so that's the, that would be, I guess, delta 4. And that would be the new delta that, that forces f of x to be in, in that even smaller interval. And you can make it even smaller. What if we, instead of a trillion zeros, what if we added a trillion and one zeros? Or a trillion and two zeros? So it says for each epsilon. So we're, we're basically, we're making epsilon infinitely small. It's closing in on L. And you can just see that from the process I've drawn. Epsilon is closing in on L, and, and x is closing in on C. And it says for every single epsilon, you have to be able to find a, a delta, or basically what you have to do is you have to find an interval that x has to be in to force f of x to be in, in its interval. So, so that means that I have to be able to find an interval, so that's the interval x can be in. x can be anywhere in that red spot, and, and then you can guarantee that f of x will be anywhere in its red spot, its corresponding red spot. Okay, so I hope that gives you some uh, more intuitive understanding of what this, what the definition means. I don't think a lot of people or students, when they first see this, really actually understand it. They just kind of go along and solve the problems like they're taught. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.